nav masses. On the Caraval, I believe Santa Maria was, they would have another sail here. He didn't have that extra sail. But it was a very seaworthy ship by all accounts, and you can see the replica floating in Bristol Harbor uh, right now. Some of the records indicate that the technology used for um, caulking the ship was uh, state-of-the-art. They used a, a cotton fiber. Yes. And um, previously it was a, a hemp and um, a tar-hemp combination, which was inferior to this cotton fiber, which would, uh, would swell when, when the uh, water hit it. And then once it started to swell, the leaking would stop because it would expand. In addition, um, the... Um, uh, fastening agents that kept the planks together, um, they would use nails, but the nails would uh, uh, deteriorate from the salt water. Right. So what they did with this ship was they used actual wooden nails with special type of very hard pegs. wood, wood pegs. which would, would, would really keep the, the ship uh, together. It would hold all the planks. And the problem is if, if this ship was not constructed with, with a tremendous efficiency and accuracy, uh, it, it would result in uh, loss of life in uh, the uh, aborted uh, mission. So it was it was state of the art for that time. Yes, uh, according they rebuilt the ship in the Bristol shipyards for the, for as I said 1997 uh, anniversary, and they used those techniques. And from available records and sources, it appears that's the most ac accurate way the original ship was built. Tell us a little bit about uh, his relationship with Mr. with Christopher Columbus, and uh, in terms of experience, he was he didn't play second. He was not second to, to Christopher Columbus. He actually had more experience in terms of being a navigator. Yes. What was the um, the relationship between him, Christopher Columbus, and uh, Americus uh, Vespucci? Okay. Well, recent scholarship, and I have a book here which uh, would uh, explain it more, is uh, Toward the Setting Sun by a British uh, scholar. came out a couple of years ago. That uh, book is the most updated uh, source for the relationship between these three men, Christopher Columbus, or Americo Vespucci, and John Cabot or Giovanni Caboto. They were all Italians. Vespucci was born in Florence a few years, I believe, after Cabot. Columbus was born in Genoa. I think Columbus and Vespucci were born around the same year, 1453. Cabot was reportedly three or four years older and born about 1450. There's some scholars, there's some indication that Col Columbus and Cabot grew up together. Genoa was a fairly small, not that big a city, and they, and they undoubtedly, according to some sources, knew each other. We don't have written re records, but they grew up probably knowing each other. They continued their friendship and relationship throughout their lives, really. Now, you asked me how they interacted. Well, I'll try to summarize. Christopher Columbus and his brother Bartolomeo or Bartholomew were involved with John Cabot for quite a while, for, for quite, quite a few years, leading up to Columbus's epic discovery of the New World of 1492. They were making plans together for a co collaborative or co uh, joint voyage where they would pool their resources and their knowledge. But for some reason, their, their relationship of cooperation, for a variety of reasons, uh, fell apart, and they became rivals, or rivals of sorts, and going to the New World and finding things in the 1490s. Now, Vespucci, an interesting character, Americo or Amer Americus Vespucius or Amerigo Vespucci, came from Florence from a pretty well-to-do family. The, uh, the other two were not that well-to-do. He had a coat of arms and he has records because he was of the class that would have birth records and everything. We know a lot about Vespucci. He was involved in provisioning the ships 
for one of Columbus's uh, voyages subsequent to 1492. More of a relationship of his future with Columbus than with John Cabot, although they undoubtedly knew each other. This was a small group of Italian mariners that got around to all the courts of Western Europe, Portugal, Spain, and England, I believe France also. Now, I should say one other thing. In this book that I mentioned, uh, can I mention the book? Yes, okay. Puts it out. It's a very well-written book. Uh, I, can, I can cite the author's name if you wish to give full credit, and I will do so if, if you wish. The book's over there. The book I, I cite it talks of a relationship, a mercantile relationship between Columbus the two Columbus brothers, John Cabot, and to a certain extent Vespucci also. These guys were merchants, businessmen that wanted to make a profit in shipping, spice trade. There were other things, fish and hide. Now, is he talking about John Cabot? Cabot was yeah, involved. His, he came from a family of merchants. Was there a difference in terms of John Cabot's uh, attitude or demeanor or his uh, focus versus uh, Christopher Columbus? Or were they on the same page, or was there a difference in terms of their, uh, mm. of their personalities? Well, according to this source, which is an excellent source, and I took note of it, extent documents that we have available indicate that Columbus and Cabot had quite different personalities. Whereas Columbus was somewhat taciturn, uh, morbid, very inward, more of an introvert, I would say, John Cabot was the opposite. He was an extrovert. He made friends very easily. He influenced people easily. He was, in all likelihood, a charismatic speaker. He made, he sold his pitch. He was a good salesman in Bristol, getting the resources he needed for his, his voyages. He, and unlike Columbus, Cabot was a person that you could get to like. He was a friendly, likable person, whereas Columbus was not. That's the difference in their personalities. Also, uh, in terms of uh, Columbus being less of a businessman, more of like a, a religious um, um, person who had some sort of a desire to uh, spread religion, Christianity, versus uh, Cabot? More, uh, well, that's a good point. More of a business uh, idea, Columbus, fishing industry? Columbus was also, his father was, a, I think, a wool, uh, in the wool industry, or made, uh, made, making wool garments. So he knew about trade, and according to the source I cited, it appears that Columbus was also uh, interested in the mercantile trade, as well as being is explorers and navigators. These guys were merchants. But Columbus had a uh, religious bent to him. He's, in some of the books, speak of him uh, in this, this book here, as a religious fanatic of sorts. He had a burning desire to spread the Christian religion, which at that time was Roman Catholicism and the way everybody was a Catholic, it was two generations before the Reformation, in his new discoveries, in other words, to convert all the heathens and pagans to Christianity that he could come in contact with. John Cabot had no such desire from what we can ascertain. He was strictly interested in the maritime navigational aspects and the mercantile aspects of his voyages. No re religious bent. He was a Roman Catholic and he apparently was observant. He attended religious services, masses in St. Mary Redcliffe Church regularly in Bristol, which was the main church at that time on the outskirts of Bristol Harbor and is today also there. It's a landmark. But he wasn't a religious fanatic and he wasn't overly religious. Columbus was. Okay. Could you comment on this next uh, picture? It's uh, the departure of uh both the Sebastian and uh, John, and the picture also uh, features uh, uh, King Henry. Okay, well, I sh this is a uh, a oil portrait. 
it was done in the year 1906 by an artist on canvas named Ernest Board.